preparations were completed here at KSC's payload processing facilities, assembling the telescopes, performing the proper testing and the checkout. The three telescopes uh, include the Hopkins Ultraviolet Telescope developed at the Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore, Maryland. The Ultraviolet Imaging Telescope developed by NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland. And the Wisconsin Ultraviolet Photopolarimeter Experiment developed at the University of Wisconsin at Madison. The simultaneous observations by the three telescopes will complement one another. Shuttle Endeavour is poised at launch pad 39A, ready for the second launch of the year. All countdown events are on schedule, and the launch team here in Fire Room 3 is not tracking any technical issues. That would prevent an on-time launch at 1.37 a.m. Eastern Time. The window extends today for two and a half hours, or until 4.07. In just a few minutes, we will be getting live coverage of the flight crew sitting down to have their pre-flight meal. Crew has been divided up onto two teams, the red and the blue team, so that they can operate in two different shifts during the flight for 24 hours of data collection. And here we have the crew of Mission STS-67. Here we have Dr. Ron Paris, payload specialist, flying on the shuttle for the second time today. Sitting next to him is Dr. John Grunsfeld, also flying for the second time as a payload specialist. And we have the rookie pilot, Bill Gregory. Commander Steve Oswald flying for the third time today. Payload Commander Tamara Jernigan. She's also flying aboard the shuttle for the third time today. And we have Sam Durantz flying aboard the shuttle again. And we have rookie Wendy Lawrence, who's also the flight engineer. We will be going into a uh, weather briefing, getting an update on conditions here at Kennedy Space Center and also at the Transoceanic abort sites. Then they'll get into their launch and entry suits and ride out to the launch pad, climb aboard the shuttle and prepare for launch today. Countdown clock has uh, remained at T minus three hours in holding. Got about nine minutes remaining in this hold. Got about five minutes remaining in this built-in hold. At T minus three hours and holding, this is shuttle launch control. Here we have the astronauts for STS-67 on the third floor of the operations and checkout building. And now going to, uh, going down the hallway, going to an elevator. This is Shuttle Launch Control. The STS-67 crew has arrived at launch pad 39A at the 195-foot level. 
just getting off the elevators and uh, they will be walking across the orbiter access arm. See pilot Bill Gregory They're just uh, giving a wave here. Um, crews getting ready to uh, climb aboard the orbiter. Orbiter access crew arm is being retracted away from the vehicle and into the launch configuration. This arm can be extended in just a few seconds if necessary. Okay, up point four times ten to the minus fifth. Okay, yes, yes, out. Profile test of the orbiter's aero surfaces has started. Orbiter flight control services are being moved through a pre-programmed pattern to verify they are ready for launch. The three main engines are being gimbaled and positioned for launch. All systems are go for launch at this time, just a few minutes away from the eighth voyage of Endeavour with a crew of seven on a 16-day flight to study the invisible universe. Endeavour OTC, close and lock your visors, make sure 802 flow, and good luck on your record-setting 16-day mission. Okay, we'll close them and start the flow. And in fact, Mr. Talon and his boys, Talon and us, his spaceship. And if Dr. Holly doesn't have a snag on yet, would you have to put it on now? T minus 20 seconds. Thousands of gallons of water will be dumped onto the launch platform in the next few seconds. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. Seven. We have a go for main engine start. Five, four, three, two, one. We have booster ignition and liftoff of Endeavour on a voyage to view the universe. Houston now controlling. Roll program, Houston. Roger, roll, Endeavour. Roll maneuver underway aboard Endeavour. The vehicle's now in a heads down position on course for a 20, 28 and a half degree orbit. Endeavour's engines have now throttled down as the orbiter passes through the area of maximum dynamic pressure on the vehicle in the lower atmosphere. Endeavour's already two miles downrange from the launch site, traveling more than 1,000 miles per hour. Endeavour Houston, go at throttle up. 
The three liquid-fueled engines are back at full throttle aboard Endeavour. At the 1 minute 30 second mark, Endeavour is traveling 1,700 miles per hour. The altitude is 82,000 feet downrange from the launch site, 12 nautical miles. Standing by for burnout and separation of the twin solid rocket boosters. And SRB separation uh, is confirmed aboard Endeavour at the 2 minute 15 second mark. The vehicle is at an altitude of 178,000 feet, downrange from the launch site, 38 nautical miles. Endeavour is now traveling 4,500 feet per second or 3,000 miles per hour. Performance nominal. Roger, performance is nominal. Confirmed. Copy. Roll program, Houston. Roger, roll, Endeavour. Flight guidance, we see good roll. Copy. Throttle up, three at 104. Endeavour, Houston, go at throttle up. Roger, go, Houston. Performance nominal. 103 converge. Endeavour Houston, performance nominal. Roger, performance is nominal. Two engine Ben Guerrier. Endeavour Houston, two engine Ben Guerrier. Two engine Ben. Negative return. Endeavour Houston, negative return. Roger that, Houston, negative return. Stand by for press to ATO, Mark. Endeavour Houston, press to ATO, select band jewel. Press to ATO, select band jewel.
welcome to the mid-deck of the Space Shuttle Endeavour. This is where we spend a lot of our off-duty hours. You'll notice on the far wall, we have some sleep stations installed. This is very important for our flight. We have a crew of seven, and we're up 24 hours a day as we split ourselves into two shifts. The red team is asleep right now. The sleep stations provide them with the privacy they need to get a good night's rest. They'll be waking up in a few hours, coming on duty. The white containers that you see velcroed to the wall contain our personal hygiene kit. In the weightless environment, it's really important to have Velcro around. Otherwise, everything will float. The mid-deck also provides us with an opportunity to carry some smaller experiments. You're looking at two of them right now. One of them is sponsored by Massachusetts Institute of Technology. It's Experiment and Control Systems Theory. We're actually doing some work for a future space station that we're going to develop. The lower experiment is a protein crystal growth experiment, as are the two that I'm panning to right now. This is an ongoing research project that's flown on many shuttles. We found that we can grow more pure crystals when we're up in this weightless environment. Well, let's go see the rest of the shuttle. Oh, here's Tammy. She's taking a break from her work to get herself something to drink. She's actually over in an area that you could call the kitchen or the galley. It's got a means to dispense water so we can fill our drink bags and also rehydrate our food. Most of the fluid on board is freeze-dried, and some of it is what we call thermostabilized, where all we have to do is throw it into the small oven we also have on board. You can see on the controls on the right-hand side that we have a means of selecting the amount of water and whether or not we want hot or cold. We also have a small oven down below this rehydration station, which Tammy is getting into right now. I think she's going to pass up some food to Sam. He doesn't get an opportunity to come down much since the experiments and the telescopes keep him so busy. Ah, uh, that's the only way to do it. Weightlessness is great. Oh, well, I guess Tammy's got to go back up to work. Here, let me give you a better view. Like I said, we have a means of filling up the freeze-dried packages we have on board and a means of heating them as well. And you can see some of the food that's velcroed to the wall.
This is Space Lab Operations Huntsville. We're again seeing real-time video from uh, Endeavour from the uh, Hopkins Ultraviolet Telescope, uh, seeing the finder camera image as the telescope is now trained on uh, Jupiter and its moons. We're using two of the moons uh, as, as uh, so-called guide stars. Uh, those are the moons Europa and Ganymede, uh, which uh, the crosshairs are focused on. Uh, the actual uh, uh, moon Io, which is the subject of observation here, uh, would be showing should be showing up within the uh, crosshairs uh, right in the center of the screen on NASA TV. And of course, the large, uh, just white uh, disk about the size of a nickel is uh, Jupiter itself, the large red planet of our solar system. Down at the bottom of the screen, we can say that, see that we're taking data uh, with the uh, Hopkins Telescope spectrometer uh, to. Uh, uh, try and measure uh, elements that are uh, showing up in the uh, ejection of material by volcano volcanoes on the moon Io. This real-time video downlight from the guidance system of the Hopkins Ultraviolet Telescope shows the globular cluster 47 Tucani, which is a primary target for uh, this orbit. The uh, stars are extremely numerous and, and quite bright. Ground operations teams are working with the on-orbit um, astronauts to uh, determine the precise pointing of the instruments and to make sure that they are targeted, locked onto the appropriate stars within this globular cluster. Astro Huntsville, we're go for line 41. Detector on. Huntsville Astro. Go ahead. You should be getting uh, Whoopi video now. And we're seeing it. Thank you.
Okay, John, if uh, you see good act marks, item six to recenter. And then followed by an item, stand by one. And 3 CJN, Briggs Cheney Middle School. This is WA4SIR. Hi, Nick. Well, it's uh, good to hear you on the air here, and uh, we're ready to ready to uh, talk to you guys. Go ahead. Okay, I copy that now. Yeah, well, you know, when I was in the fourth grade, uh, the Mercury program was in full swing, and uh, I used to watch the uh, Mercury launches uh, my teacher would bring a TV into school, and I would watch them all. And uh, I got really excited about it then, and I think uh, ever since then it was sort of in the back of my mind that flying in space is something that I really wanted to do. Oh, I think the human race could live on other planets. In fact, uh, I would very much like to... Uh, to see us uh, colonize Mars. I think Mars is a great, uh, great expansion area for us because it's um, it's a little bit like the Earth in the way it's built and uh, could be uh, built into a planet that uh, humans could survive on pretty well. I think. Space Station Mirror, Space Station Mirror. This is the Space Shuttle Endeavor. How do you hear? Well, we hear you loud and clear. Go ahead. 
Dr. Seigert, I presume. Well, being the only real English-speaking person aboard, you assume correctly. I was wondering how your English was uh, by now, Normie, but it sounds like you haven't forgotten a thing. Uh, how are you liking your new, your new home there, Dr. Taggart? We all settled in? It's not bad at all. It's uh, nice and roomy, and uh, places that are cool and places that are rather warm, so you can migrate to wherever is most comfortable. Is this to you? Yeah, it sure is. And, uh, Actually, the scenery around where I am, I've got uh, six other faces, but uh, it looks an awful lot like Discovery did back in 92, Norm. Well, you know, I figured if we were ever in orbit again, we'd probably be on the same spacecraft. I guess I was wrong. Well, it's kind of amazing. We've got uh, 13 human beings in orbit right now, and I think that um, you're just starting off on your big adventure, and we're about to end ours tomorrow. But I think the fact that we've got 13 humans on orbit uh, is uh, is signaling that we've got a whole new horizon uh, just unfolding for us here with our joint space efforts. And uh, we're real happy for you. Well, I'm happy for you. I believe you've had a successful flight. Everyone on board asked me to pass along their best wishes to you. And uh, in the Russian tradition, we you like to bomb Miyaki Pasetsky. Uh, we sure appreciate the words, and uh, we've had just a great flight here. We've, the orbiter's been working just great. We've gathered a lot of uh, ultraviolet data for the guys on the ground, and uh, we're hoping to come home tomorrow if the weather lets us, and if not, uh, we'll just be forced to spend an extra day on orbit.
Endeavor, Houston, about a minute to LOS. We'll pick you up on the other side at 2125, and it looks like we have a view of uh, some sort of tropical cyclone sort of system out there in the Indian Ocean. There's a lot of serious blow-off there. Yep, we certainly have some clouds out here, Mario, and uh, I guess we'll see you on the other side of the LOS. Catch you then. Go ahead, John. Yeah, the past few acquisitions, the uh, IPS has been pointing, you know, a little bit off, and uh, this one, as soon as we commanded the Astro Star Tracker, it was almost right on with uh, the Star View display we have up here. Some amazing lightning from our downlink cameras, Endeavor. Yeah, it seems better with your eyeballs. Quite a picture with the lightning and the sunset. And we got city lights to the east, and I'm sure you're looking at as well. That's an incredible view. We can see the Cape very clearly. Astro Hunt still for Ron. job. We've got an awful lot of observations and data. IPS performed fantastic. The Astro payload did too, as did the crew. I guess it's time to get close to stow our orbiting astrophysics laboratory.
Dad sing this beautiful instrument, go to the stowage position. Well, it's done a fine job for us, and we're real pleased to have been part of the mission, Dave. We have uh, tried to downlink camera A. I don't know if you have TV available. We've uh, put it up on camera A if you do. Affirmative. Thank you. We're getting a great image. Good morning, Tammy. Good morning, Dave. Endeavour now being uh, commanded into its first roll reversal. Uh, this is a maneuver to uh, bank the orbiter from left to right or vice versa uh, to uh, increase the drag during the entry, thus slowing the airspeed of the orbiter and uh, dissipating the proper energy uh, on the command of the onboard computers. Never Houston, we show you approaching the hack. No change to weather. The winds are 2-3-0 at 15 peak 22. That's three peak four from the right, 15 and peak 22 on the head. We would like a late drag chute deploy just in case we can get the crosswind DTO. Roger that, we copy. Endeavour is uh, traveling right now at a descent rate seven times steeper than that of a commercial jetliner as Oswald prepares to flare up the nose prior to landing. Pilot Bill Gregory has deployed the landing gear. Main gear touchdown. Nose gear touchdown. The drag chute has been deployed. Endeavour rolling out on runway 22 at Edwards Air Force Base to complete a shuttle record 6.9 million mile astronomy research flight. Copy, we'll stop, Endeavour. 
and welcome home, Endeavor, after a fantastic record-setting mission. It'll be a tough one to beat, and it sure is nice to have you all home. Well, it's nice to be here, Kurt. Okay, as we copy. Okay, post landing Delta's flight. We'll stop, Houston. No Delta's flight. Copy, we'll stop, no Endeavour. And welcome home, Endeavour, after a fantastic record-setting mission. It'll be a tough one to beat, and it sure is nice to have you all home. Max flight. Well, yeah, it's nice to be here, Kurt. Max. No Delta's. Copy. No immediate Delta's. He's got to pick up in the post landing. Endeavour, Houston, no post landing Delta's, and you're go to pick up in the post landing procedure. Okay, GNC flight. Flight GNC. Any other Delta's? Roger that. Negative. In the procedure. DPS. Endeavour Houston, you have a go for the hydraulic load test. Roger, and work. ET doors look good. <laughs> 